and my hips are getting bigger. What's up everybody, it's Caleb. Just wanted to do a quick video just to talk about some things. So I get the question a lot like, dude, what are you? Are you, are you a developer? Where do you work? Like, do you do YouTube full time? What is going down with your life? As many of you know, I've done programming tutorials here on YouTube. I've also done videos like how I got a job at IBM, but then I do videos like a day in the life of a future software engineer, right? And that would imply that I'm not a software engineer. So this video is gonna be five reasons why I'm not a software engineer. There is something overwhelmingly overwhelming about computer science and coding. And as I was learning coding, I always had the same issues come up where something would happen and I wouldn't have the slightest idea how to solve the problem, right? So this was before I was considering going into school and getting a career in computer science. I was kind of just doing it for fun in high school. And the thing was, is like, I don't know if I'm up for a year, uh, a lifetime of frustration. I don't know if that's what I want to get my life into, right? So that was one of the big reasons with computer science why I was so hesitant. And um, I don't really think I've gotten over that and I think that's just part of the job. I would say it gets easier, mainly because you learn how to debug better. You get more general knowledge about different programming languages and different approaches. So the process does become easier, but it's, it kind of comes with the job. Ain't that right, Kava? Ain't that right? Is that good? <laughs> the second reason that I am not a software engineer is just the, the knowledge required to be one. So as, uh, as I was beginning my studies of computer science, it just seemed like everything required so much more knowledge than I had and any little topic had a 1000 page book available for study. So it was just completely overwhelming. And I'm definitely not the only one who feels this way. Um, I actually just did a video over the imposter syndrome, which is essentially what that is, where you feel like everybody knows everything and you're the only one who doesn't know anything. And I think as time goes on, that also gets better because you know you learn more and you start to realize that all the languages are very similar and you become more experienced over time. But even so, it seems like there's still an overwhelming amount of information. So this is where I started contemplating, you know, maybe I should go to computer science school. Maybe I should do a boot camp. Maybe I should just study on my own and just all these challenges and all these questions and my dog is, just, oh my gosh. Uh, so annoying in a good way. I was really hesitant to go into a computer science program though because every computer science program required a bunch of math and I really wasn't good at it and I didn't really like it a whole lot. And it seemed like only a, a fourth of the content was actually computer science and everything else was gen eds and math and other hard things that I didn't want to take. <laughs> so now that I'm starting to consider being a software engineer, I've already gotten through the undergrad program. So I got through the math classes, I survived. <laughs> and I, I decided to go that route rather than the boot camp or studying myself route. And we can talk about that in another video, but I feel like I got a lot of fundamental knowledge. And even still, I feel totally overwhelmed by just the, the mass amount of content you're expected to know. One thing I did to make this easier for me is that when I was in school, I made it a point to work while I was in school. So by the time I graduated, I already had over two years of professional experience in .NET development. This helped me understand that you don't have to know everything. You only have to know a couple of things really well. Computer science is that general background, but becoming a .NET developer, for example, all you really gotta know is C-sharp, ASP.NET, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and a bunch of other stuff but you, you do it for the purpose of building an application rather than the purpose of feeling like you just need to know everything. So you're able to look up solutions to your problems and build an application. That's the cool part. So that's, that's one thing I did to help me with that problem. And even now, 
I am in the industry very young, just so I can make sure I don't lose my skills, essentially. There are select cities in the United States where software engineering is a big deal, and then basically all the other cities, there's nothing but like cornfields, right? So I did not want to move to San Francisco or New York. I really just wanted to stay at home. I was preparing to get married, really close to my family. I'm not really up for the whole moving to San Francisco, finding myself and enjoying my career and paying $6,000 a month for like a studio apartment in some guy's basement. <laughs> it's not really what I was into. And fortunately for me, one of the positions that I took as the .NET developer was a remote position. So I was able to work from my house and still get that experience in development. When I first got this position, I honestly wasn't really sure if it's what I wanted to do. I remember having sort of like an interview with the boss, the, the founder of this small company. And when I left my house, I was like, mom, I, I don't think I'm gonna take this. And then I came home and I was like, mom, I got a job. <laughs> so it was really weird in the sense of, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do it, but I knew it was a good opportunity, so I took it. And that's what really molded me into wanting to be a software engineer now, because I was able to experience development in a less shocking manner by not having to move across the country, doing it full time, etc. So I was doing a part time .NET development job from my house. It was really simple. After this first job, I jumped around to a couple different coding positions, and I ultimately landed on one that was very good. It was also .NET development, remote. I really enjoyed it but I was given an opportunity that I thought was better than that. And unfortunately, this opportunity wasn't in development. But at the time, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. This was a role inside of a big company that would give me that industry experience, but it wasn't in a typical coding role. I am more of a developer evangelist in the sense of reaching developers, creating content for developers, doing social media. So it was kind of a way to get started in this company without having to be stuck behind a desk doing coding all of the time. This job offer was a really good offer and I couldn't turn it down. It wasn't development, but that's okay because looking back, I'm actually glad that it wasn't a development job because for the last year, I had to work full-time and do full-time school, which I'm glad I did, but it was also really super hard. My work performance was pretty terrible. My school performance was pretty terrible. And overall, it was just a uh, pretty terrible experience, but definitely beneficial for me and really helped me grow, helped me balance my time and focus. And now that I have graduated, I think I'm ready to take on a different role. There's absolutely no way I could have handled a real software engineering position full time while finishing my last year of school. It just couldn't have happened. And if I did manage to do that, what I think would happen would be that I would be so stressed out that I would end up hating development. I'd graduate with a bachelor's in computer science, have a software engineering job, and hate all of it. <laughs> so all this discussion brings up the obvious question of what really my life goal is. Do I wanna be a software engineer or am I cool with the situation I'm in? And that is one thing I wanted to address next. What exactly are my life goals? Well, I have three of them I wanted to discuss in this video. The first is, yes, I do wanna be a software engineer. I'm working to prepare for that. I'm doing mock interviews, I'm studying, working my butt off. <laughs> and that is a huge thing that I want to pursue now that I'm out of school and I'm working full time and I'm able to spend my evenings preparing. The second thing is I continue to want to grow my business here online and on the internet. So I'm making more videos, I'm doing more blogs and strengthening my social presence. Got a lot of stuff going. And overall, I think that's really growing. It's gonna take some time, obviously, but overall, I think it's doing pretty good. But the third thing is that I actually want to help all of you guys break through those barriers that I've experienced of not really being sure if coding is something I really wanna do, not really being sure if it's something I'm capable of doing, getting over issues like math and whether or not you should go to a computer science program and deal with the math and all of those kinds of questions that developers or soon to be developers have. All of these things I wanna talk about in this channel. So I'm gonna be talking about how to be a software engineer, how to prepare for it, how to be a developer. I'm gonna be talking about how to grow your online presence and build a portfolio 
so you're more marketable in the job market. And I'm gonna be talking about how to get past barriers. I'm gonna be talking about the barriers I'm going through and also looking at barriers my audience is facing and helping people get through the problems they have.